Our next topic in market failure is looking at information asymmetry. This is a pretty easy topic, we'll cover it real quickly. All these theories, demand and supply, price me mechanism, you know, that's demand and supply working together and excess demand and supply being eliminated by the market, uh, the market clearing price, meaning equilibrium. All those ideas assume that knowledge of the market is equal between those people who are buying the goods and those people who are producing the goods. It also assumes that they know everything about the market in which they're operating. Well, like my dad told me when I was a youngster, and I thought it's a little shocking when he said it, um, it's bad to assume. Well, he actually said something else, but you'll have to Google it to find out the problem with assuming. Anyhow, um, so we assume too much, and the simple fact of the matter is that most buyers um, probably don't have a very good idea about the market they're working in. It could also be true of the sellers, and is to some extent always true of the sellers, but it's likely they have a better idea of the market in which they're operating, because of course it's their livelihood. Anyhow, let's go ahead and look at a couple of uh, diagrams just to get a, a better understanding of this. One of my students, who will remain nameless, uh, did her commentary on uh, bottled water. And in this commentary, the article she was responding to, uh, there was an algae bloom, just something was wrong with the drinking water in a certain city, so people started demanding more and more and more bottled water. Well, what they didn't know was the bottled water was coming from a, a, it was being produced in the same city from the same water supply, and they were just filtering it like they always did, and, you know, obviously they could have done it themselves. So, the outcome was this, the market existed at D1 and supply. So, people were demanding bottled water more than they should have been. We're assuming that if they knew that the, uh, you know, the bottled water, there was nothing exotic about it or especially clean about it, we're assuming that they wouldn't have demanded it at D1, but instead D2 would be, uh, would, would be realistic because of decreased taste for the water. So, because they didn't know, because they had an information asymmetry, Obviously, the suppliers knew how they were producing the, the water. That hadn't changed. The supply curve is just the supply curve. But because people thought they wanted bottled water more than they actually did want bottled water, if they really understood the matter, well, because of that, the price and quantity are both higher than what they should have been. So, of course, what that means, and the reason why it's market failure, is we're over allocating uh, our factors of production and over allocating the amount of money we have to spend, we're over allocating it into this market because of this bad information that's shown over here at D1. It can happen the other way as well. So for example, there's a, an old story I like to tell, it's not that old, about five years ago, um, there was a popular fashion trend where people started taking feathers, a specific type of feather, some eagle feather or something like that, and they started putting it into their hair, uh, you know, in their extensions. Um, Stephen Tyler of Aerosmith uh, was, was pretty famous for having these, but it, it, it became quite popular throughout, um, you know, during that, during that time, maybe 2010 or so. Well, the feathers that they wanted to use, they weren't real available, but the place that you could go buy them was at fly fishing stores. So fly, fly fishermen would use these same exact uh, feathers. Oh, they're rooster feathers is what they were. These same exact feathers, they would use them to tie flies from, obviously, you know, to catch fish with and that sort of thing. Well, the stores that sold them, the fly fishing shops, they had no idea, of course, that there was higher demand for these feathers than there should have been. So they kept the prices down at P1 and Q1, or down where they had been, instead of charging the higher price P star and Q star. So what ended up happening is all these uh, hairdressers uh, would, would come into these fly fishing shops and buy up all of the feathers, and they would buy, you know, maybe buy a feather for a dollar, and then turn around and sell the feather to a consumer, you know, by putting it into their hair, you know, for a hundred or hundred and fifty dollars or something like that. So driving the price way, way up. Meanwhile, all these people who wanted to buy the feathers for catching fish would show up at the store and there were none left. So at P1, there was this massive scarcity between what was being supplied on the supply curve and the demand curve uh, that, that actually existed. The shops thought 
the, the fly fishing shops, they thought they perceived the demand to be at D1, just like people who were misinformed about the bottled water perceived the demand to be at D1 here. They perceived it to be there, but that wasn't actually true, leading to a misallocation of resources.